the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In looking at a gospel reading like ours today, it can be one of these events from the Bible, one of these accounts that we seem to really like. There's a lot of drama, a lot of excitement in it. There's demons, and there's pigs, and there's drowning, and there's lots of really kind of interesting things. It's the stuff of Hollywood, perhaps. But this demon possession does not seem like other Hollywood demon possessions that we might be familiar with. In this particular event, this particular man, there are no head spinning, there are no, there's no foaming at the mouth or vomiting pea soup or anything like that. This man is not like the demon-possessed person in The Exorcist, but rather this man, his symptoms look very different. He is isolated. He is by himself. He is naked. He is living among the dead. And it'd be easy for us in our modern society to look at this and simply dismiss it and say, well, what they thought was demon possession is really just mental illness or perhaps drug addiction because his symptoms look very similar to those things which we see in our own society. But for this man, there could be no doubt that he was afflicted not with mental illness, not with drug addiction. This man knew for a fact he was afflicted with demons. And Jesus knew that too. And so Jesus goes to this man, this Gentile man, this man on the opposite side of the Sea of Galilee, this man who lived in a region where they had pigs, so obviously he was a Gentile. And as he approaches this man, Jesus begins a conversation with him. Jesus demands that this demon leave this man. And the demon responds, what have you to do with me, Jesus? He calls him the Son of the Most High God, and he begs Jesus. He begs him not to torment him. And then he begs Jesus not to send them, I was going to say him, them into the abyss. And then he begs Jesus to send them into this herd of pigs instead. Yes, the demons, and the demons are plural, they are many, they are legion, which is like an army of demons possessing this man, even though they are many against one Jesus. This one Jesus has authority and power over them that they are begging him for mercy. And so Jesus in kind of an interesting turn of events, grants their request. Jesus shows mercy to the demons, at least for now. They beg Jesus, do not throw us into the abyss, and Jesus says, okay, for now. Indeed, there will come a time when those demons will be cast into the abyss, the time when the Son of Man comes again to judge both the living and the dead, at that time those demons will be cast into that eternal abyss. But not just yet. No, Jesus, his time has not yet come. And so rather than cast them into the abyss, he grants their request to cast them into this herd of pigs. You see, the demons have to occupy something. They have to possess someone or somebody, some body. And so Jesus allows them, rather than occupy the body of this poor man, they are then allowed to occupy and possess the bodies of, this, of these pigs in this herd. 
And so upon entering the pigs, the pigs are cast into the lake, drowned, and dead. Now much like the demon-possessed man had to say to Jesus, so also we might say of this story, what has this to do with us? What does this mean for us as Christians? None of us are demon-possessed. Most of us probably haven't known anybody who has been demon-possessed. It seems like a very insignificant event for one particular person, and we look, what does this have to do with me? Well, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am here to tell you that each and every one of us is this demon-possessed man, or at least was. We were all born in unbelief. We were all born with our sinful natures fully intact, fully turning against our Lord. We were born totally sinful, totally unclean, rebellious against the Lord and His will. And then we were brought to the waters of holy baptism. And we say in the waters of holy baptism that we take the old Adam and we put him to death so that he may be drowned and die. That old unbeliever in us, that demon possession within us, is put to death in the font of holy baptism. So that a new man, the man in Christ, may then live. A man who is clothed in Christ's righteousness. A man who is in his right mind because he now has the mind of Christ. Yes, this story of the demon-possessed man is none other than a story of baptism. I don't remember where it was, but I saw a baptismal font once that in the basin of the font, in the bowl, at the bottom of the bowl were carved images of pigs in the bottom of that basin. And that is a direct reference to this text. This text, which tells us that the pigs, that the demons went to the pigs and were drowned and died. And so also it is with our sinful nature, our unbelieving nature. It is put to death, it is drowned and dead in the waters of baptism. It is on the bottom of the basin, never to resurface again. And so, if unbelief ever afflicts us, if our doubts come or our fears come and those demons start to rear their ugly heads again, we need to do nothing more than remind them that you are baptized. We remind them that we have been possessed by our Lord and our Savior. He has grabbed hold of us. He has called us by name. Yes, we have been clothed with Christ's righteousness in our baptism, and so we put those pigs back where they belong, at the bottom of the water. We tell them they have no power over us, not because we have power, but because Christ is the one who has authority and power over them. He has cast them out once and for all, never to be seen again, never to harm us again. Yes, this old Adam in us, this sinful nature of unbelief, still wants to keep rising up. But Jesus, by his word, continues to cast out that sin, that unbelief, continues to throw it away, throw it away from us, so that we may have life and have it abundantly. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says that says you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people for God's own possession. There's that word, possession. We are possessed not by demons, but 
by God. He has called us his children. On this Father's Day, we recognize that it is by holy baptism that God has called himself our Father, and we are his dear children. It is by these waters of holy baptism that we are able to cry out, Abba, Father, and receive the great blessings that come from being his child. Yes, in baptism, we are God's holy people, his chosen people, a people for his own possession. But then 1 Peter 2 verse 9 goes on to say that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have been called by our Father out of darkness, out of unbelief, in order that we might proclaim this wonderful gift to others. This man, after he was in his right mind and fully clothed, clothed by Christ and his righteousness, wanted to stay with Jesus. He didn't want to go home again. After all, going home again would mean that he was merely that crazy, demon-possessed man. That was his reputation. He wanted to stay with Jesus, begin his new life. But what does Jesus tell him to do? Stay here, go home, and tell everyone what God has done for you. And that's exactly what he did. He went and told everyone what Jesus had done for him because he recognized that Jesus Christ was none other than the one true God, that he may declare the praises of him who called him out of his darkness into this marvelous light. The marvelous light and freedom, the revelation of knowing Jesus and the salvation that is found in him. Yes, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is my prayer for us as well. We who have been baptized into Christ that we may put on Christ like a garment, clothing our nakedness, giving us a home and a family in the church of Christ. And then we proclaim what God has done for you. We proclaim what Jesus Christ has done for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs>